and welcome to today's video on data warehousing interview questions and answers. In case you're new here, then we're doing a five video series of five questions each on data warehousing and this is the fourth video in the series. So if you're interested, you can check out the previous videos as well. I'll put a link down in the description box. So let's start with the five questions for today. So the first question for today is what are many to many relationships? So you might already be aware of the different kind of relationships that exist in a database model. There are one to one relationships, there are one to many relationships, and then there are many to many relationships. So many to many relationships is a data warehousing related question because this is a very frequent occurrence in a data warehouse design and there are special ways in which we need to implement these kind of relationships. So before going into all that, let us understand that what is a many-to-many -many relationship. So we'll take this example wherein we have two entities, students and classes. So these are two database tables, students and classes. So a student can take multiple classes. So by classes, we are referencing here to the subjects. So a student might be interested in taking a class of English subject, a class of math subject, a class of science subject, or so on. So a student can take multiple classes, as well as a class can be attended by multiple students. So there are multiple records in each of these entities, which are, re which are related to multiple records in the other entity as well. So let's look into this in a little more detail to make it easier to understand. So here we have the student entity. Let's say we have two columns here, name, date of birth, and so on. We have three students, as you can see over here. Then we have this class entity, wherein we have some other descriptive fields like the subject, the teacher, and we can have many more fields. And the two subjects that we are considering right now, which is English and Math. Now, students, let's take the example of these students, Adam, he is taking the class English, Ross is also taking the class English, Eva is taking the class Math, and Adam is taking the class Math. So, if we look at the classes that Adam is taking, then he is taking multiple classes. He is taking English as a class, as well as Math as a class. And now, if we look the other way around, that how many students are taking the English class, then this English class is being taken by Adam as well as Ross. So Adam is related to two records in the class table, which is which are English and Math. And the English subject in the class table is also related to multiple records in the student table, which are Adam and Ross. So this becomes a many to many relationship because a record in entity one is related to multiple records or many records in entity B and likewise a record in entity B is, is related to multiple records in entity A. So this is a many-to-many -many relationship and this is how a many-to-many -many relationship would look like. Now moving on to the next question which is a follow-up on this question. What is a bridge table? So we just now saw what is a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, how do you implement this in a data warehouse design? You need to resolve these kind of relationships and implement them in a particular way. So you have your student, student entity, you have your class entity. You need to implement another entity or another table, which is known as the bridge table or the link table or the relationship table. And then you need to combine records or the relationship. You need to capture the relationship between these two original entities in this new bridge table. And now let's take another look in detail to understand that how do you capture those details. So we have the student entity. We had all those records, name and date of birth, and there can be many, many more fields, class entity. Now you need to create another table which would link these two original tables and that is known as a bridge table it is also known as a link table it is also known as a relationship table now what information would you keep in this bridge table so you can see that we had the student names and their date of birth so we will create an id column for the students which will uniquely identify the students and the student table which would be the primary key and similarly for the class entity we will create another primary id column and then 
the student ID and the class ID. That is the information that we are going to store in the student class bridge table. Let's store the information for Adam. Adam has a student ID of 1. He takes the class English as well as the class Math. So student ID 1, he takes the class of English. So the class ID here becomes 1. And he also takes the class Math. So there's another record that is inserted for Adam with his student ID and then the class ID for Math. So this is the way the records will be inserted in your bridge table. And now what is the advantage of this table? You could have created a single table or you could have uh, added the information of these classes in the student table itself. Then what is the disadvantage of that approach? The disadvantage is basically that there is redundant data. You would be repeating the data. The volume of data would become very high in the student class table. And then the maintenance would become very difficult for this table. Whereas this new bridge table that you have created, this is very compact. You just have the ID column. It is very quick to scan through this table. So your queries would be very fast. If in case you require the information for the student, descriptive information from the student table as well as the class table, you could just directly go to this table link to the student and class tables and fetch all the information that you need. That would be very quick because in the bridge table, you have just stored the ID columns with the index and primary key columns and they would be very fast to scan through. This is the approach you need to take for resolving the many-to-many -many relationships and implementing them in a database or a data warehouse architecture. Moving on to the next question. What are additive facts? So now we know that the fact tables contain measures and there are different kind of measures that we are going to take a look at in our next three questions. So the first is what are additive facts? So additive facts, as the name suggests, are the measures in a fact table that can be aggregated, that can be added. Basically, as the name suggests, it says that they can be added. So we are actually referencing to aggregating them which can be aggregated across all the dimensions that the fact is linked to. So some examples you can take are sales. So if you have a sales or the what was your sales amount, the sales amount can be aggregated across customers. So you can aggregate it across the customer dimension. It can be aggregated across geography. So you can aggregate it across the geography dimension. It can be aggregated across time. So what were the sales in your past 10 years? You can aggregate this uh, this particular column or measure. So it can be aggregated across the time dimension. What were what was the sales amount for those 10 customers in that location? So you can aggregate it across customers as well as geography dimension. So additive facts are the ones which can be other measures which can be aggregated across all the dimensions that the fact is linked to. Another example is quantity. So quantity of products bought by a particular customer, bought by um, bought in a particular store, bought for the last 10 years. So you can just add them all or aggregate them all across all the dimensions. The next question is what are semi-additive facts? So semi-additive facts are the ones which can be aggregated across some dimensions but not across all the dimensions. So some examples you can take over here are the account balances. So account balances are basically cumulative kind of measures. So you can aggregate them across the customer dimension. So what are the account balances of these 10 customers? You can add them up and give the final amount. But you cannot add them across the time dimension. So you cannot say what was the, what are the, what are the total account balances um, in the last 10 years. So you, for that particular customer, you cannot say that because whatever is the current account balance is his updated account balance. So what, you cannot add them up because that doesn't make sense because it is a cumulative kind of measure. Similarly is inventory level. So what was your level on day one? What was your level on day 10? You cannot add them up because this is again a cumulative measure. So they can be aggregated across certain dimensions but not across all the dimensions. Okay, so the last question for today is what are non-additive facts? So non-additive facts, uh, again as the name indicates, they cannot be aggregated across any dimension. 
so a very good example are percentages and ratios so you cannot add up the percentage for 10 customers it doesn't make any sense similarly you cannot add up the ratios for 10 customers so what is the approach how do you resolve this issue you can store the numerator and denominator based on which you are calculating your percentage so if you are calculating your profit percentage you should store your cost amount your sales amount and these kind of things so that you can add them up separately and then calculate the final percentage or ratio so this is the approach that you have to take for non-additive facts because they themselves cannot be aggregated across any dimension but then you can store the numerator part and the denominator part separately and aggregate them across whichever dimensions um, they can be aggregated upon so these are the three kinds of measures in a fact table additive semi-additive and non-additive so these are the five questions for today i hope you like this video please do not forget to subscribe to youtube channel for more such videos and we have the last video left which would be coming out soon with the last five questions on data warehousing so stay tuned please subscribe and i'll talk to you later thank you and goodbye